What is up, mortals? It is Charizard out here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Part 3 of What If the Big Three Were in 1A. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. Nejide Hado skipped her way into school. She hummed to herself, thinking, day number two of my first year of high school. It was a bright, sunny morning. What could the day hold? Anything was possible at UA. She was the second one to the classroom, the first being Tenya Ida. He seemed the studious sort. Good morning, Nejude said chipperly, and a good morning to you, Ida replied. I hope you're ready for another day of learning. Totally, she replied. I can't wait. This is going to be so fun. Ida frowned. Fun is not the reason I enrolled at this school, and I hope it's not what you are seeking either. Nejude pouted. Hmm, there's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself now and then. School doesn't have to be all stressful and stuff. Ida shifted in his seat. I realize that, of course. I do find myself enjoying my time training and studying. I'm just saying that we shouldn't let enjoyment get in the way of responsibility. Of course not, Nejire agreed. She beamed. Ida gave a small smile back. She was already starting to make friends here. The next person to walk through the door was Momo Yagirozu. Momo! Nejire called. Yagirozu seemed surprised that Nejire called her by her first name. H Hello? She said. What you got there? Nejire asked, pointing to the thermos Yagirozu was holding. It's tea, she answered. Ooh, what kind? Nejire pried. Yagirozu smiled and started chatting more amiably with Nejire. Pretty soon, more of their classmates started arriving. Ochako Uraraka and Suyu Asui joined their conversation. Nejire could already tell she'd get along with those two pretty well. Okay, I think everyone is here, Nejire said. I've been memorizing names and faces and I think I've got everyone. Quiz me! Okay, Nagyurozu said. She pointed to each of the classmates in turn, starting with the front of the room and moving to the back. Not only did Nejire get everyone's first and last name right, but she also guessed their quirks correctly. That's amazing! Udaraka exclaimed. Yeah, Sue agreed. I'm not as good with names as you are, Hado. Ribbit. Why, thank you! And call me Nejide, she said. I hope it's okay if I call you all by your first names. The girls nodded. Someone cleared their throat at the front of the room. <clears throat> if you young ladies are done socializing, I'd like to start class, Mr. Aizawa said. Uraraka and Sue hurried back to their seats. Yagirozu blushed. Nejire laughed nervously. <laughs> Sorry, sir. She sat down. Across the aisle, Tamaki was biting his lip nervously. He seemed to be pretty intimidated by their teacher. Nejire grinned at him, trying to lighten his mood. It worked, and Tamaki straightened a bit in his seat. As Mr. Aizawa began the class, Nejire looked around the room. She saw classmates that hung on to their teacher's every word, while others looked sort of bored. Her gaze wandered to Mirio. He had his usual smile on his face. There was also a gleam of excitement in his eyes. As she scanned the room once more, Izukumi Joria caught her attention. He was leaning forward slightly in his chair. Nejire at first thought he was just that excited. But then she realized he was using his legs to lift himself out of the chair a bit. Impressive! He was even exercising during class! Dismissed. Mr. Aizawa said. Nejire blinked. She had totally missed what he just said. Playing it cool, she followed her fellow classmates out the door. The rest of the morning, she tried to pay attention during their normal lessons, but she was too amped for the afternoon and their special hero courses. At long, long last, lunchtime came. Would Nejire even be able to eat? She was so excited her stomach was doing backflips. But I have to keep my strength up, she reminded herself. After getting some food, she looked around at the tables, trying to find a spot to sit. Murio and Tamaki were over by the windows. She stopped by their table and set her tray down. May I sit with you? She asked. Absolutely, Murio said. The three sat in silence for a while. They were all pushing their food around on their trays. So, Nejire said, you guys can't eat either? No, nope. <laughs> I guess not. Mirio chuckled. I am way too stoked for a hero training. 
Tamaki tried to lift his fork, but his hand was shaking too badly. I... I know I need to eat something. Otherwise, my quirk won't be as effective. But I'm so nervous. For training? Hejide asked. I'm sure it'll be fine. No. Tamaki answered. I'm nervous because there are a lot of people in this cafeteria. He clamped a hand over his mouth. I think I'm going to be sick. Murio looked concerned. Aw, oh, come on. It's not that bad. No one's even looking in our direction. Tamaki swallowed hard. He did look a bit green. Hey, how about instead you think about your favorite hero? Najide suggested. How would they encourage you right now? Tamaki thought a bit. He'd probably tell me that a real hero always keeps his head up. That you can overcome anything if you just keep at it. Mirio nodded. That's great advice. Tamaki rolled his eyes. You should know. You said it. Najide beamed. Tamaki blushed. Well, yeah, I mean, Mirio is my hero. I appreciate it, dude, Mirio said. You're my hero, too. I sense a story behind this friendship, Nejire said. Do tell. So for the rest of the lunch period, Mirio and Tamaki shared about how they became friends and how they influenced each other's goals to become heroes. All three of them loosened up and were able to talk freely with one another. They even managed to finish eating their lunches. Laughter was truly the best medicine for them. The bell rang. Well, Mirio said, I guess we should get going. I am so ready for this! Nejide exclaimed. The three walked into their classroom, ready to face their next challenge. This video is sponsored by Grubhub. With more than 3,000 store locations, Grubhub offers on-demand convenience delivery across the country. You can search for restaurants by cuisine or location, quickly order food from the menu, and track your order from the app. All hassle-free and without any extra charges. Grubhub charges less than any other food delivery services, allowing you to get the best value for your money. With Grubhub Plus, you can get free delivery prices for 10 meals every month on orders of $12 or more for only $9.99 a month. That's not all. You can use the code AFF25 to save 25% off your first mobile orders of $15 or more. This code is for a limited time, so again, get 25% off your limited mobile order of $15 or more now if you use the code AFF25. Check the link in the description. Thank you again to Grubhub for sponsoring this video. All might! Mudio cried when they got back to class. That's right! The pro hero exclaimed, I am here to teach you your foundational hero studies class. The students chattered excitedly. All Might laughed. Ha 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 ha! I love the enthusiasm. Today's lesson will be entertaining to watch. Nejide clasped her hands together. Wow! All Might teaching her class! What a treat! Before we begin, All Might continued, You'll need these! Panels slid out from the wall. Twenty-three briefcases were revealed. Your hero costumes! The students rushed over. One by one, they were handed their case. Everyone basically sprinted to the locker rooms. When she opened her case, Nejide gasped. Her costume was just what she wanted! She put it on as quickly as possible and checked her reflection in the mirror. It's... perfect. She whispered. Her hero costume was a classic spandex jumpsuit. It was dark blue with teal accents. On her hands and feet, she had sets of spirals. The look was completed with yellow gloves. Nejire tilted her head and frowned a bit. Then she got an idea. She spiked up a section of her hair on either side of her head, then used her quirk to make them into corkscrews. Now she looked like she had two antennae. That ought to make a statement. The girls all finished changing and went to where All Might had told them to meet. Nejire was busy checking out the other girls' costumes and complimenting them when the boys came in. Well, 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 she said. I guess that old stereotype about girls taking a long time to change isn't true after all. <laughs> guess not, Mirio laughed. I like your costume, by the way, Nejire. Thanks, she chirped. You guys look great, too. Mirio was dressed in a jumpsuit as well, but he had white on the top navy on the bottom, and red gloves. He also had white, knee-high boots, 
a mask, and the long red cape. The number one million was emblazoned on his chest. He put his arms out and spun around to give Nejude a view of the whole outfit. Isn't it awesome? I feel like a real pro hero, and my costume is made with some of my hair, so it'll phase with me. What a relief, Nejude muttered. What was that? Nothing! Nejude changed the topic. Tamaki, what do you think of your costume? He looked down at his outfit. It was a simple black jumpsuit with armor pieces on the arms. He didn't wear any shoes, and the suit didn't cover his feet. That made sense. Any shoes would probably be destroyed if he used his quirk. Tamaki also had a purple military vest with lots of pockets. Like Mirio, he had a mask and a cape. Except his cape had an oversized hood attached. Tamaki adjusted his hood to lay lower over his head. I really like it, he said. Me too, Nejude said. All the students were present and accounted for, so All Might strode over to begin their lesson. You all look great, he complimented. Now you're ready to begin your first day of hero training. We will be conducting a battle trial. Here's how it will work. You will be split into teams of two. Each team will battle another team, with one being the heroes and one playing the role of villains. All Might continued explaining, and Nejude's adrenaline started rushing. He started to divide the groups. Tamaki, you and I are partners! Nejude exclaimed. Tamaki pulled his hood lower over his face, but Nejire saw the small smile he had. But wait, what about me? Yurio asked. There's an odd number of students in our class, so I didn't get a partner. Ah, yes, young Togata, All Might said. I have a special role for you. Hado and Amajiki will be playing the villains, and you will be the sole hero on the scene. In the field, there are many instances where you can get separated from your sidekicks or partners. So your task will be slightly different than the other teams. You will be responsible for either taking down the villains, securing the payload, or getting to the roof of the building undetected so you can call for backup. I'll give you a walkie-talkie. All you need to do is turn it on and say your location. Mirio thought about that for a while. Okay. I like a challenge. Haha, <laughs> I'm game! Nijure playfully punched him in the shoulder. <laughs> well, that's good, because you're going to get a challenge, right, Tamaki? Tamaki gave a shaky thumbs up. Okay, All Might said. I love the energy. Heroes always have to adapt to new situations. Students and teachers do too. Now let's get started. Team A and Team D, you're up first. Nijure joined the other students to watch the battle on some TV monitors. She wanted to learn as much as possible by watching her classmates. Idoria, Uraraka, Bakugo, and Ida would be up first. Nejire had to laugh when Ida started acting like a villain. The guy clearly wasn't cut out for a life of crime. Bakugo was talented for sure, but he was a bit hot-headed. Idoria and Uraraka were doing pretty well as heroes. Their teamwork was very good for two people who hadn't known each other that long. One after the other, the teams did their mock battles. All Might would ask for everyone's opinions after each fight was over. It was nice that even the students who were only watching were able to learn something. Nejire was especially impressed by Shoto Todoroki. The guy froze the entire building, walked past his opponents, and secured the payload like it was nothing. All right, time for the last group, All Might announced. Nejire took a deep breath. <sighs> this was it. She grabbed Tamaki's hand and started marching out the door. Come on! We're winning this thing, she declared. She glanced back once to give Mirio a challenging, yet friendly, look. He met her gaze and gave her a cocky smile. Oh, yes. Nejure was going to enjoy this class. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things I'd like to go over before this video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our Patreons! BD Flames, Ethan Davis, Terry Chills, Shifter Meles, Adam Zagil, Zill, XAVB03, and Joshua Phelps. Secondly, I'd like to thank all of our YouTube members. Toya Costa, Rob the King, Sith Lord 906, CF2364 and Knuckles, Rimuru Tempest, Angel Juarez, Donald C. Stewart, Brian Greer, and Demonized Fox. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their own namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. 
fourthly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the Recruitment Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for new members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day!